Yes, yeah, so I, I meant the crap in the crap. Right? Yeah, the, 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 the stuff that doesn't quite 103 is the goo. Yeah. <laughs> and the canonical functor is back to C. Drops it. Drops it on the floor. Yep. So That's right. So it's not necessarily... Why did that happen? <laughs> um, so it's not necessarily something you want to do. If you have some structured data, you're kind of screwed if you wish you had structured data, of course. Well, I mean, but <laughs> SQL, works, SQL works with the crap, not with... Uh -huh. By and large, a SQL database is supposed to a relational database. Uh -huh. To be an asshole uh -huh. about it for a second, uh -huh. I um, right? If, if, yeah. if you're willing to say relational is too hard, right. what you're really saying is I'm very happy with my SQL. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So the point is that category theory, like there's something called uh, factorization systems, where t taking a semi-structured database and giving you a structured database is something that is well known to category mm -hmm. theorists. It turn any functor from C to D into a discrete op vibration from something to D mm -hmm. in a canonical way. But canonical uh, doesn't Canonical meaning functorial. Right? Uh, no, I just oh. I, it, it meaning canonical. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just right. I, 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 I I'm missing the step to end the one I wanted. Well, if, if, if someone messed you up, then you're <laughs> screwed. All right. If someone gives you, someone shuffles your, I don't know. Right. Yeah, so, so right. You cannot undo. I, I I I don't need to keep objecting. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm, it's interesting. I'm. I yeah. just, sure. That's why right. I'm talking. Uh, I'm curious then, how do you canonicalize something like 104 that has? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a great question. So, what happens if you have a, so in this, so let's say you have that nice theorem. Let's hope that that nice theorem really is nice. Actually, it's not nice. So what happens is it, it equates hello and goodbye. They become the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. what always concerns me with business rules like that is there, there's always there's usually always exceptions to those business rules, especially that business rule. Which business rule? The that employee. your manager will always be in, that the manager will always be in the same department uh -huh. as the employee, right, right. especially mm -hmm. once you reach Move higher, in, high enough up the hierarchy. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. right. By the way, uh, this isn't an answer to your question, but it reminds me of something, namely that with categories, you can say manager to the seventh power equals manager to the eighth power. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you can say, no, everyone's seventh manager is their eighth power. My hierarchy doesn't extend beyond seven. Mm -hmm. And that way, you won't have infinitely many. If you try to mm -hmm. import data into it, you won't have infinite chase or anything like that. So, what do you foresee as the logic for business roles in, the, in, the, in, the, in the theoretical realization of the categorical database? Well, presumably, he's going to cover that. Do you mean? We'll just cut it in Agda, and he'll just write the extra laws as uh, proof, proof oh, constraints. Oh, okay. Which is great, as long <laughs> as you're never on the categorical database. <laughs> how, how do you implement it? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm asking what the logic is for your business rules. Is it just first order statements? Is it just equational logic over yeah, yeah, category? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first order theory is... Yeah. It's category theory. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay, so Fair the conclusion enough. is that this growth and deconstruction idea kind of turns a, a relational database state into one of these RDF triple mm -hmm. stores in a way that, that kind of, you can see how they both play in the same, in the same theory. And, okay. All right, so now we talk about these migration functors I was saying something about. So given a category C, the, as I said, well, the category of states on C is known as C set. So the objects in C set are database states on C. And the arrows in C set are called natural transformations. And what that means is that you have a table for every object in your category. I have a table for every object in your category. And there's kind of a map from the rows of yours to the rows of mine that makes all the, all the data, preserves all the data. So C set is called a topos. In particular, it has exactly the same kind of logic as was just described in the last talk, where you know, it's, not a, it's not necessarily a Boolean. Um, but it, is, it does have an internal language and a logic supporting the type of lambda calculus um, automatically. And uh, amorphisms, okay, that's just kind of a nice thing. Amorphism between schemas, so if I have two schemas, amorphism is just a functor from one to the other. I'm always worried it's going to blank. Um, so given such amorphism, so we each have a schema, a worldview, or I have an enterprise model for Verizon, and you have one for uh, AT&T, or I don't know, I have something I just bought out. Uh, Washington Mutual was bought by um, Wachovia or something. Um, you want to import all the data. So you find a connection, which is always hard, but suppose you find one, then how do you uh, map data from C to D and from D to C? So what you want is, given this thing, we want a functor from C set to D set, and a functor from D, or, and a functor from D set back to C set. 
And the easy, like, I don't know how happy you guys are with functors and categories and stuff. If you are, this will appear as easy as the word, as the word easy. But if not, hmm. maybe not. Okay, so suppose you have a functor from C to D. Then that allows us to transform states on this database schema to states on this database schema. How? Well, I have this functor C to D given. If you give me any state on D, delta, then I can just compose with this given guy and get a state on C, F semicolon delta. So what that means, and if you had a natural transformation of states here, I would get a natural transformation of states here. So in other words, we have a functor, and I call it delta. Um, well, it's, it's a well-known kind of word for it. Um, it basically acts by re-indexing. Um, the map from C to D, maybe some tables in C are some tables in D are missed by F. Those will kind of be dropped by this migration functor. And maybe some are duplicated or some table, some, uh, some arrows are dropped or duplicated and, and this migration functor kind of just re-indexes things, renames, re-indexes. This, this functor delta has two adjoints. They both go from C set to D set. And I'm not gonna tell you what an adjoint is, but they're very, cool things in category theory, and it allows you to take any um, C set and push it forward by kind of sums or unions, or by, from C set to D set by kind of products or intersections. Uh, so these are kind of given by God. If you found, if you were so, if you helped yourself to find F taking C to D, then God will help you. And, that, uh, and that's because we have F from C to D is the two functors, right? We had uh, a functor from C set to D set and a functor from D set to C set? Was that no, we, we, way, just, way back? we just had our two schemas, okay. which are like a bunch of tables and they're all that stuff, yeah. and we had a functor between them. But, but one slide further back, didn't oh, we yeah. say something about the structure of F? Yeah, it's just a functor. Given F from C to D, oh, given, we want those functors. We want okay. those functors, all right, right. Sure, all right. right. And we get this because um, this is the canonical example of having limits and colimits. Yes. Right. A set has limits and colimits. Right, and pre sheaves on set. And pre sheaves also. On, oh, okay. Have, another word pre sheaves. Well, then, then you're okay. fine. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the earlier discussion that once you, once you throw out a categorical word, everyone goes, oh! Yeah, okay, yeah. right. So pre sheaves. Well, right. these are, these are co pre sheaves. Exactly. These are pre sheaves on C. But it doesn't matter. Uh, pre sheaves are very. Are, are, when someone says pre sheaves on C, they mean functors from C op to sets. So yeah, they're really just taking all the arrows and putting them the other way, and that's, you just think, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so in other words, given a morphism between schemas, in other words, a way of translating your way of naming things into somebody else's way of naming things, you get ways of translating any data they have into your language, and any data you have into their language in canonical ways. Uh, and, and any composition of deltas, sigmas, and pi's is called a polynomial functor. And they can all, you can take any se sequence of delta f, sigma g, pi h, delta i, sigma j, compose them into a long chain. Any such thing can be put into just one of like three of a delta, a sigma, and a pi. And those are called polynomial functors. So here's an example of a database schema. Um, every, you have a table of boys and men and women and girls, and every boy and man and woman and girl has a name and an address, and that's kind of the whole address, but the whole address you can recover just the street and just the city. Um, so this is some strange database schema. And here's a functor from, I'm going to give you a functor from here to here, and I'm not going to tell you why I'm doing it yet, but I'm just going to do it. Uh, each object goes to the thing of the same name. And you might ask, where does this arrow go from boy to street? Well, it goes to this composition of arrows over here. So I'm just giving you a functor. And I'm going to give you a functor. In a second, I'll explain what, it, what the migration does along that functor. But first, you have to just notice what a functor <coughs> is. It takes objects to objects and arrows to arrows. So what's this functor to do? Well, it's going to take name to name and street to street. But it's going to take boy and man to male and woman and girl to female. And each of these arrows will go to the obvious arrow here. And one last functor, I'm going to this category is different than this category, but the functor is obvious. It just takes every object and arrow to the one of the same name down there. The question is, why would you ever do all these crazy functors? And the answer is, well, I would hope that if people got good at thinking about databases in this way, 
that you would you could create the, the query I'm, I'm about to tell you about by just imagining this as the obvious way of doing it, quote unquote. So you have this table of boys and table of men, and they all have addresses and streets and cities and stuff like that. If you f if you delta f to here, what happens is you just forget the address, the street number, kind of, and just recover the street, and you forget the city. So as I said, you can drop tables or duplicate tables under a delta, and that's what this does. Even though f goes this way, it pulls data back to here. When you go from g, if you do a pi, it works by kind of products or intersections. And so, and so, no, I'm not doing a pi there, I'm doing a sigma there. Uh, that works by sums. So since boy and man are going to male, male is going to end up being whatever state you had here of boys and men and women and girls. This is going to be the union of your boys and your men. This will be the union of your girls and your, and your women. And finally, h, when I do a pi to it, it works by kind of intersection, although you wouldn't really know it to see it. What this does, what will be in q at the end of the day, uh, this check mark just means I want this diagram to commute in my category that I invented here. Um, it is going to be the set of all males and females that live on the same street. So the query that you wanted back here was I want the set of boys and the set of males and females that live on the same street, and you can kind of first drop everything but the street, drop address and city. Males and females with the same name who live on the same street. Uh, I didn't require this diagram. Oh, I see. You're only checking on the right hand yep. sub bit. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Uh, so first, I drop what I don't care about. Second, I union boys and men and women and girls into females and males. And third, I create a new guy where I require this to commute. And the kind of canonical pi, the thing that pi does automatically, is it tries to find the best solution to the problem of I want a male and a female whose street agree. And so its best solution, quote, its universal solution is a set of all of the ones that you could have given. I mean, you could have put in Q just one male and female that agree. That would be a valid database state or an empty set. But the canonical solution is to put everything that's possible. Every male and female live on the same street. So these kind of views and queries are obtained as polynomial functors. So then our actual answer is the image of that uh, object Q under the Right. Uh, That's right. In Q will be a set of rows, and each of those rows will have three columns, a male column, a female column, and maybe I should have drawn a column here to a street composition, mm -hmm. by, comp by composition. And that's right. So you'll see, a t if, you, if you then like throw away the name for some reason, I don't know. No, you probably want the name too, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So another, I mean, let's see. Just keep going. This will yeah. do this. <laughs> Just keep going. Okay. So I looked in Wikipedia for a select query, and this is what they told me. So I thought, okay, what was the schema for this? Well, they must have had a table for book, and it has a title and an ISBN and a price, and there's something about prices that are bigger than 100. I thought the price would be a real number, although it probably wasn't. Um, okay, so the first thing you want to do is use a pi functor, or first thing you want to do is, this is supposed to stand for the where clause. And a friend of mine um, in, the, in CSAIL, and I made a, find a way to, or he has like a parser for SQL statements like this. And so there's actually a parser on the internet now that it'll take anything like the, any conjunctive query, and disjunctive we didn't do yet, but you can still do it, um, and turns it into one of these things. So it takes the where clause and it just puts in there, um, it's just gonna be the set of books and prices bigger than, and numbers bigger than 100 where, that, where the price of that book is that number. And um, so if you